that's the casino where my campsite is at in East St. Louis, Illinois. I've been in Illinois many times in my life, but I'm about to step foot in Missouri for the first time. We'll be walking over this bridge, over the Mississippi River, and into St. Louis. The Mississippi is brown and muddy looking. That's mostly sediment from Minnesota that'll end up all the way down in the Gulf of Mexico. I'm getting the full Mississippi River experience watching a tugboat pushing a barge. A pusher boat, they call it. That's the money shot. We made it to the arch, and it's magnificent. I can check that off my bucket list. They came up with the idea for the arch in the 1930s, but it wasn't built until the 1960s because of the cost, which ended up being $13 million in the end. The Secret Service forbids presidents from going in and up the arch for security reasons. And dogs are forbidden, so I won't be going up there. This statue is of Dred and Harriet Scott, who were slaves that sued for their freedom. I feel like there's more statues in the Midwest than anywhere else, but according to Google it just seems that way because there's so many Abe Lincoln statues in Illinois. Pennsylvania and Massachusetts have the most statues in the country. Very nice little city, this part of it anyway. I've never used a scooter, and I'm not starting now at age 58, even though there's a lot more I want to see in St. Louis that isn't walking distance. So we'll be coming back in the van. It's been a very frustrating morning driving in St. Louis. I prefer to drive in cities on Sunday mornings for obvious reasons. Google Maps seems to be unaware of the number of roads closed and blocked off, and there's a ton of one-way streets making things more complicated. I'm going to try to get near the river. There's something interesting there I want to see. This is the Mural Mile. It's in an industrial part of St. Louis, not far from the arch, right along the Mississippi River. I've always loved good graffiti art. It's raw. It's colorful. There can be a message. There's mystery because you usually don't know who did it. Amazing. And totally worth a frustrating morning trying to drive around this city. Now we're going to get back on Route 66. This is the Donut Drive-In, and it's been here since 1953. It already has a long line at 7 o'clock on a Sunday morning, and the smell of the donuts is driving me insane. It smells so good. I had a caramel donut all picked out, but I'm not waiting in a long line. Doesn't smell this good at Dunkin' Donuts. Another iconic stop on Route 66 in St. Louis is Ted Drew's Frozen Custard, which is basically an ice cream shop. This place has been here since 1941, and it's still in business. It opens later in the day. Ted Drew's is famous for a milkshake called the Concrete. It's so thick that they serve it upside down and it stays in the cup. I was glad to read that it's still owned by the Drews family. The trim on the building looks like icicles. Cute. Another St. Louis Route 66 slice of history is the Crestwood Bowling Alley. The building is newer, but the neon sign has been here since 1958. This bowling alley was opened and owned by professional bowlers. I'm old enough to remember when a lot of people were in bowling leagues. It seemed like most people. As a child, I bowled every Saturday in a bowling league in the 1970s. Bowling was extremely popular up until the 1980s when people's tastes changed and there were more options. But the Crestwood is still in business. Now we're heading into central Missouri. It feels good to be away from the city. I'm happy to report from the signs that this Route 66 landmark is being saved and turned into a visitor center. This was a restaurant originally called the Red Cedar Inn. 
and it was built just after Prohibition ended and Route 66 arrived. It attracted celebrities and baseball players like Ted Williams. It was owned by a pair of bootleggers. When Prohibition ended, they had to do something for a living, so they cut down wood from the family farm and built this place themselves. I see in old photos it had gas pumps, so back in the day a lot of these restaurants filled up your tank in more ways than one. We saw that on Route 66 in Litchfield. This is the town of Pacific, Missouri, named after the Union Pacific Railroad. This town was destroyed during the Civil War. I love American history, but I don't enjoy war history, so let's look at a lovely train mural instead. It's interesting that it's in a shopping plaza. A canvas is a canvas, I guess. This is a depiction of people celebrating the first train arriving west of the Mississippi. That was in 1853. Trains turned this into a booming town for 80 years. Let's see what else this town has. You don't see too many quants at huts anymore. These half-circle metal buildings were from World War II that the military used for a lot of war-related needs. After the war, they were repurposed for civilian use. I took care of an old lady who lived in one. This one was a laundromat after the war, and then it became an iconic Route 66 diner called Monroe's. Now it's a catering company. I could find no photos of the Monroe Diner interior, but I saw silica mines on my way into this town. So I'm imagining this diner had a really long counter, and seated on the stools would be a mix of silica miners and travelers passing through on Route 66. And based on my experiences here in Missouri so far, it would have been a very polite, friendly atmosphere. I'm off the beaten path a little bit. I wanted an excuse to walk my dog around, get a little fresh air. Your destination is on the left. This is a shrine that was built by one man. He was a Franciscan monk from Poland. This is dedicated to the Virgin Mary, which the Polish call the Black Madonna, also known as Our Lady of Czestochowa. Seems like every Polish Catholic church is called Our Lady of Czestochowa. There's one in my hometown. The Black Madonna is the Virgin Mary with dark skin. There's a lot of mystery and speculation as to why she was depicted with dark skin, but the Polish believe she saved them from a Swedish invasion in the 1600s. Polish Franciscan missionaries emigrated to Missouri in the 1920s. They were given an abandoned convent on this property and an infirmary was built here. And Brother Bronislaus was in charge of the infirmary garden. And he did a little decorating, apparently. Patron saint of animals. Hear that shrimp? You're represented here. Brother Bronislaus died of a heat stroke while building this. That was in 1960. If building this magnificent shrine doesn't get you into heaven, then I don't know what does. There's the Black Madonna. I survived Catholic school, so I deserve some holy water. Shrimpy is Catholic by association. Bless you, my pup. You're going straight to hell for shaking that off. Head southwest on Miller Drive toward North Service Road East. There's something odd in St. Clair, Missouri. Hot and cold water towers. Hmm. Your destination is on the left.
Jesse James Wax Museum. This could be either really bad or really, really bad. No, it could be quirky fun. I'm going to do it. Okay, that was the first time a museum actually pissed me off. And not for reasons you'd think. First, the internet told me it was a $10 admission. It was 13 and that's fine. And then she said, no cameras. I get it, that's fine too. First thing the museum shows us is a short film about Jesse James. The first five or 10 minutes were very interesting facts. Then the film launched into a conspiracy theory. I hate conspiracy theories. They're ruining this country and they don't belong in any museum, even a cheesy wax museum. According to the film, Jesse James was not shot and killed at age 34 because some 98-year-old guy claimed to be Jesse James and he assumed a fake identity. And two other really old guys said, oh yeah, that's Jesse James. The guy in the film looked to be in his 70s, not 102, which is how old he claimed to be on his deathbed. I thought Missouri was the show me state. Well, show me a DNA test or shut the f up. I was so pissed off I broke the rules and took a photo in the wax museum. Here's a 102 year old Jesse James on his deathbed. And I think those are his two 100 year old friends. Stupid. This is the Merrimack Caverns. I, I hate to flake out on something I intended on seeing, but the cavern tour is an hour and a half long. I don't want to spend a beautiful sunny day in a cave. We just had a week of rain in Missouri. The owners of this cavern claim that Jesse James allegedly used it as a hideout, and it's a big selling point of this tourist attraction. But I'm not finding any details or proof of that, and I think it might be another conspiracy theory. I think these people also own the Wax Museum. The Circle Inn Malt Shop on Route 66 in Bourbon, Missouri. just closed in 2019 after 60 years in business. It was family owned the entire 60 years. I saw a lot of reviews on Yelp, people complaining that they still allowed smoking in here. I guess they were trying to keep it authentic till the bitter end. What I love about Route 66 is that you drive through cities, small towns, rural areas like this, you get a nice variety. We're on our way to Cuba, Missouri, and I'm looking forward to it. <laughs> 